Romania is completely corrupt from head to toe. Right? I have a very, very extensive network in Romania. I, I like to make this very clear. One of the reasons I love living there so much is because I'm at the very top echelon of society. If I need to speak to the prime minister, I can make that happen. Right. So I end up with all these chicks just stuck in their house, sitting there, bored, completely in love with me. And of course, they don't go out. They're not allowed out. And then girls didn't want to quit because they knew there'd be a party about them. And they didn't want there to be a party about them. Do you understand? I had girls come to me saying, look, I have to leave. I'm sorry. I really have to leave. Please don't throw a party about Like, Because they were so scared of all the girls who used to know them, like mocking them behind their back. So we had like this group think thing going on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Angry Foreigner channel. This episode will be called Never Trust a Man with a Weak Chin. I am, of course, talking about Andrew Taint, the man who has 10 children and yet feels the need to lecture women on how slutty they are. Now, just a fair warning to all you viewers out there. Be aware and beware. This taint is pungent and you might faint from the sheer audacity of the taint. Andrew Tate is now famous for being some kind of truth-telling red pill guru of masculinity, but that's not how he earned the money that he's flashing on social media. No, he earned his fortune by preying on the same lonely, porn-addicted men that he claims to want to save. Together with his brother, they set up a webcam business where they would hire women and pay them to come up with completely made up sob stories manipulating lonely men into giving them money. Weaponizing empathy like the most astute of SJWs. Basically a more evil version of OnlyFans is how you can describe their company, as if OnlyFans wasn't satanic enough as it is. And speaking of OnlyFans, of course they have a hand in that honeypot as well, with the two brothers running an agency where they help sex workers with marketing and presentation. So they can take your nerdy money in between those tainted rants about how feminism and female sexual liberation is ruining the West. Tips on raising daughters so they don't end up 304s, prostitutes, on the pole, OnlyFans, etc. Most men I know don't have daughters for these reasons. I'll chime in very quickly and I'll say, one, I have recruited, I think, although you've worked with a lot, more girls into, I guess, the adult entertainment industry than anyone else. I really have. And the one type of girl I couldn't recruit were girls with rich parents. Oh, do that for money. I don't need money. My family's rich. So when I see these broke boys on Twitter, and on Instagram, be like, oh, my daughter, I'm raising her right. And she's like nine years old, but he like works some crappy job. He's a wagey. I'm like, oh, she wants, she's going to get that Louis Vuitton purse one way or another. So you might want to level up your game and buy it for her, my G. Speaking of his webcam business, because of those made up sob stories, many of these lonely male customers would rack up huge debts, with one man going so far as to give away his $24,000 inheritance. Worth mentioning is that the Taint Brothers are, to this day, very proud of all the men they scammed and hustled. When interviewed by a British magazine, they admit to this business being a total scam but clarify that the authorities can't stop them. Whoa! And just to be exceptionally clear, his brother says, I don't feel any guilt because nobody cares. And it's their problem, not mine. You know, just to be really clear how little empathy he has for anyone. Men, women, humans, robots, aliens, etc. Given his background, I find it deeply ironic how his fan base is made up of men who hate promiscuous women. Well, genius, what do you think is a precursor to OnlyFans foddery, if not webcamming? Taint is one of the very people who paved the way for simping and foddery to become widespread epidemics. He certainly played his part in enforcing big tech social isolation, so when you think of your hatred for slutty women, keep in mind that those are his long-term business partners before he came up with a new way to make money, preaching to lonely dumbasses like you. But first, he had to escape the numerous rape accusations that have been thrown at him over his lifetime. Here's a quote, just completely irrelevant to the context. 40% of the reason I moved to Romania was because rape laws are more lenient there. And I'm not a fucking rapist, but I like the idea of just being able to do what I want, he added. Yeah, no, you adding that definitely makes you look like less of a rapist. Absolutely. I probably shouldn't say this on the internet, but I'm going to. Romania is completely corrupt from head to toe, right? So when Corona came, 
I've through fighting and through these things, I have a very, very extensive network in Romania. I, I like to make this very clear. One of the reasons I love living there so much is because I'm at the very top echelon of society. If I need to speak to the prime minister, I can make that happen, right? I, I can't do that in the West, yeah? So we went and met with some members of parliament and they're like, well, it's not us, it's European Union directed all of this COVID lockdown garbage. So I did a deal with them to open them on the sly and pay bribes. So for I was open for like the first month with bribes, but the bribe kept going up because it's Romania, right? The police chief would come, he wants some, and the police chief would call his mate, who's the fucking, I don't know, fire inspector, some jackass, he'd come. Then the alcohol licensing man would come. It was just like, everyone's got on the phone like, hey, this casino's still open. They'll pay you to go away. So before you know it, every five minutes, someone's in the door for money. And we weren't making money, so we had to close down, so. Did you know that the taint used to be on Big Brother? The number one show for fame-hungry basic bitches with nothing of spiritual substance to offer the world. He got cancelled back then too, and kicked off after only five days when two women accused him of rape and domestic abuse. To this, Mr. Taint denied the charges. Then again, after this, he decided to move to Romania with the following quote on how police operate there. As in Eastern Europe, none of this garbage flies. If you go to the police and say, he raped me back in 1988, they'll just say, well, you should have done something about it then. End of quote. Okay, well, if this is your idea of consent, maybe it's not weird that you keep inventing situations where people can accuse you of sexual abuse. Speaking of which, the UK is well known for letting down rape victims. For example, they allowed Jimmy Savile to rape underage children for decades, simply because he's famous. They also allowed the Rotterdam Muslim grooming gangs to prey on many underage girls and ignored accusations because police didn't want to come off as racist. In the UK, only 1 in 100 rapes results in a charge, let alone a conviction. So when it comes to the two women who pressed charges against him, it took four years for police to even bother bringing the case to a prosecutor, at which point the taint had vanished out of the country so he can sell online courses about how to manipulate and pimp out women. He describes this so-called business model in a now deleted section of his website. There he brags, saying, quote, over 50% of my employees were actually my girlfriends at the time. And of all my girlfriends, none of them were in the adult entertainment industry before they met me. Well, that's a fantastic influence you have on people, isn't it, Andrew? Bragging about how you've contributed to the same porn industry that preys on lonely men sitting in front of their computers. But let's not forget the female prey in the equation as well. Here's another quote. My job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her, test if she's quality, then get her to fall in love with me to the point where she'd do anything I say, and then get her on webcam so we could become rich together. End of quote. What's amazing is how he pretends this isn't the textbook definition of pimping and trafficking. The specific wording, get her to fall in love with me so she'll do anything I say, makes it obvious it's hardly about mutual love. It's about exploiting people naive enough to fall for his charismatic persona. And as I'm sure you already know, pimping often involves physical abuse, something the two women mentioned earlier gave very graphic depictions of in their accusations. According to them, this extremely cringy poster hanging up in his headquarters is true to life. And here we can read, quote, If there's ever a problem, if there's ever a glitch, Big Tate won't wait, straight slap a bitch. End of quote. Well... Let's see who ends up playing the role of a bitch when you're in prison. His own words on making people fall in love with him so he can get him to do anything makes it clear that he thinks of intimate partners as commodities. So it's really no surprise that he's now arrested in Romania on suspicion of human trafficking, rape, and organized crime. Nose. I'm all over the place. So I end up with all these chicks just stuck in their house, sitting there, bored, completely in love with me. And of course, they don't go out. They're not allowed out. Like, oh, Tate's away, so they go out with their friends. No, 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 no. You don't go to the club with your friends. I don't know what kind of bitch-ass dude is letting his chicks go to the club with her friends without him. No. You stay in the house. You don't go nowhere. You're not, no restaurants, no clubs, nothing. Females are sheep. Everyone says men are, everyone says women are complicated. No, they're not. Women are extremely simple. 
Women are programmable. Women are blank slates and they're programmed. And they're either programmed by you as a man or they're programmed by society. So with my women, because of groupthink, every single time a girl would fire, get fired or quit, we'd have a party. And when you'd have a party about a girl quitting, all the girls would stand around and laugh. Oh, she's going to end up asking for her job back. She doesn't appreciate what Andrew did for her. Ha, 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 da, da, da. And then girls didn't want to quit because they knew there'd be a party about them. And they didn't want there to be a party about them. Do you understand? I had girls come to me saying, look, I have to leave. I'm sorry. I really have to leave. Please don't throw a party about it. Like, Because they were so scared of all the girls who used to know them, like mocking them behind their back. So we had like this group think thing going on. But this is how women are programmed to as a whole, even out here in society, bro. Prosecutors found six women who have allegedly been sexually exploited by his entourage via the Loverboy method he used to advertise on his site, which is just a cuter way of saying pimping. What's exceptionally creepy is that one of the members of this entourage, which helped him in recruiting women, is a former female police officer in Romania giving the whole thing a Serbian film vibes. If you have a female former cop recruiting for you in some kind of Ghislaine Maxwell-esque scenario, maybe that's why it took this long? Police in Eastern Europe aren't exactly known for giving a shit about human rights. One Romanian celebrity commented on the arrest saying the only reason police acted now is because the alleged abductee is American, while Romanian girls are trafficked all the time without anything being done. Point being, this guy actually used hashtag me too as an excuse to relocate to a human trafficking hotspot. Now that's just creepy. But he's not just creepy, he's a fucking moron, and every piece of advice he gives on women is perfectly tailored to set men up for romantic failure. So this is some game. The woman has the power the whole way through the date. Until you sleep with her, she has the power. She's in charge, because you, she's the prize, you want her. A lot of men say I'm the prize, but most of those motherfuckers say that dumb shit ain't the prize enough. They're nerds, right? So she has the power, she's the gatekeeper. The first time that power dynamic changes is after you sleep together. Because now, she doesn't keep you in a relationship. She's just a one night stand or a hoe. Sure. You first sleep with her. Most men first sleep with a chick, and they continue to chase her and they throw away their power. They get power and they never crosses their mind. They throw it away. She stays in charge. Well, I have learned in my experiences, if you're dating a girl that she's in charge and you sleep together on the first night. And after you sleep together, don't ignore her. Don't be a dickhead, but just kind of reduce your attention by 65%. Just mm -hmm. like cut it back down. I'll sleep with you now, boo. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. You? Shorter replies, more delays, etc. Yes. And here's, how, here's what you learn. A good woman will then up her game and try harder to keep you. Who talks about power? when you're trying to describe a healthy relationship. You sound exactly like George Costanza. That's pretty much what he said in an episode. No, everything's not going good. I'm very uncomfortable. I have no power. Once in my life, I would like the upper hand. Here's a teacher talking about the effect that George Costanza, uh, no, I'm sorry. Here's a teacher explaining what effect Andrew's taint has had on her young students. Spoiler alert, they became tainted. Quote, just this week, I had to have six conversations with families about their sons saying things like, women are inferior to men and women belong in the kitchen. Not only are they making these misogynistic claims in class, but they're literally refusing to do assignments if it's sourced from a woman. I had three boys refuse to read an article by a female author because, quote, women should only be housewives. But when I say I'm a teacher and I'm here teaching you, the cognitive dissonance kicks in and they start saying things like, yeah, but teaching is a woman's job, end of quote. I guess the point here is that parents are really, really stupid for even letting their children exist on the internet. And so inevitably, the internet is going to get more and more censored because of it. Because even as an American, you apparently don't see the problem in using the Chinese spy operation known as TikTok. Shame on you. Being in love as a man is absolutely or not really one of the best human experiences. It doesn't matter how many girls you've had or how long you've been around, every once in a while you'll meet one, you'll like her more than the rest. And being in love with her is a fun thing. You get to show her the world, you get to Explore her innocence by giving her brand new experiences. Perhaps she's never been to this particular club or been in a car this fast or been to this country. You can take her places, you can teach her things. You can be her guider and protector and you can benefit from her femininity in return. Ugh. What the, 
This guy managed to take the pleasures of love and just put it in the creepiest way possible. It's like I'm watching a sketch with Dennis Reynolds. The whole purpose of buying the boat in the first place was to get the ladies nice and tipsy topside so we can take them to a nice, comfortable place below deck and, you know, they can't refuse because of the implication. What do you mean, explore her innocence? What, what, what kind of women are you targeting that are completely unaware of the world. Are you hitting up some kind of special needs center, Andrew? I've been watching you, and following you of sorts, you know, in a good way. So how'd you like that magic show? Do you enjoy magic? You know, I, I can do magic. Whoop. How did you get, get that? Get your license, don't worry about it. 1996 though, that's good. That makes the cutoff, there you go. It's so creepy how everything he describes here really applies more to a daughter, not a wife. But he obviously doesn't know the difference, and neither does his far too much on the spectrum fanbase with zero emotional intelligence. Taint has said on numerous occasions that he, as a nearly 40 year old man, primarily dates 18 year olds. Which just gets creepy after you hit a certain age barrier. After a certain age, the average young woman feels like a child, just because you're so far apart in life. So, I'm really just seeing two explanations here. Either you're so immature that you're clinically retarded, or you get off to the idea of preying on the innocent. Which we've already demonstrated is true when it comes to men, at least. Whenever you bring up how Taint made his money and his morally questionable background, his intellectually superior fanbase says things like this. If no one wants to listen to the guy, then why is he so popular? And why does half of the male population in America like some of the stuff he says? Well, that's a made-up statistic you just pulled out of your... Ugh, whatever. You can hate the guy, just don't try to ruin his popularity by bringing up some false stuff that has been resolved. And don't say he's a bad man for his scams even though that's how you usually define a bad man. But don't say he's a bad man for his scams, because in reality it's just called people are stupid. The Hustlers University is a scam to make him more popular and to make more money. But guess what? The people who join are suckers, just like the webcam scam that he did. He knew that he could make a lot of money off of the losers who have no game. End of quote. Wow, zombie. You uh, really picked the perfect username there. So Taint fans will actually call other Taint fans losers and suckers for believing in the shit he says. Enough to make him rich. Whether the Taint is preying on men through webcam scam operations, or if it's his bullshit hustler university scheme, you are dumb for listening to him. But you still agree with the things he says? What kind of a community is this? How is it possible for you to be a fan agreeing with the guy while calling his fans losers and suckers for listening to him? I haven't seen this much taint on taint action since the ending scene in Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Jennifer Connelly. Great acting, truly deserving of praise. You did a good job. Because unlike Andrew Taint's fans, you were acting. You were faking it. You were playing a role. I can't say the same for their level of taint on taint action. Really, all you're gonna find here in this following is men talking about male camaraderie while showing none of it themselves. Their idea of it is calling each other stupid losers for belonging to said camaraderie. You people wanna claim a chick's body count and her past dictates everything about her while you're completely ignoring Andrew Tate's past and you refuse to admit what it can dictate about him. You're ignoring his body count of the men he screwed over. Andrew Tate has fucked more men than any woman. He is the bad bitch that he's warning you about. That level of hypocrisy may be one of the many explanations to why no woman wants to touch you. Because it's really the tip of an iceberg to the bitterness and inconsistencies you display, which are so vile, it's clear you're only attracting ball-busting feminists because you're so obviously in need of a helper. I also have to point out how dumb you gotta be if you plan on saying anything along the lines of well he makes some good points whenever the topic of taint gets brought up. You can say that about anyone, dumbass, even Hitler. That certainly doesn't justify his existence. Oh, but he was a vegetarian. Oh, but he liked welfare. Oh, but Germany was the first country to prove smoking gives you cancer. They did a study as early as 1939. So what? 
Can you at least try to look at the overall picture here, or are you just gonna insist on being a candidate for autism? Because you're so selfish, you can only focus on what aligns with your existing opinions. You know someone is a mindless consumer when they treat real-life issues like a soccer game. And that's exactly what the taint has done such a good job at weaponizing. Taking people's legitimate objections to feminism and relying on the average internet consumer to be so ignorant, so click hungry, they just want to nuance absolutely everything. The good points that he makes aren't even his own. Far more respectable and coherent people have said the same thing in better versions for longer. But some people will happily defend any douchebag that echoes your own opinion. That only means you have a huge ego. Don't conflate that with reasonable nuance. As far as I'm concerned, Andrew Taint does the same thing as Tim Pool, which is to never have a backbone, never have a spine, never have a clear-cut personality with clear-cut values. Always flip-flop back and forth with conflicting opinions to the point where everyone can agree with you because you're always contradicting yourself. And that way, you can always reel in the new margins of stupid, which uh, can be enough to make you millions. And then those people can't handle being called out on how dumb they are, so they end up calling you jealous for not joining them in their ass-licking process. Well, here's a red pill that you can go ahead and insert into your mangina. I don't care. I don't want people's approval. I don't want the approval of strangers. I don't need your jealousy. I don't even want to own millions if it means that I would have to pretend to care about people as dumb as you. Just let me work at a factory with a couple of Al Bundys and I'm perfectly fine. Because in terms of money and material possessions, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth becoming uh, tainted. Now, Taint claims to be a Muslim these days. Before that, he spent years claiming to be a Christian, so here's Andrew's idea of religion. Choose a career that involves beating the shit out of someone, or pornography. Lead a lifestyle that leaves you with as many children as you've collected sexual assault allegations. Oh, and lots of material possessions. Nice cars, money, fancy suits. Oh yeah, that's so Christian. Oh, and let's not forget dating young women who should be looking for a husband, but instead they're sucking taint. Sorry, Tate. What? You have ten children who you are not spending time with. Ten children at least, meaning there's even more. That means you must have consistently fucked up since your early 20s in order for that to be possible. You're worse than old dirty bastard. Fuck's sakes, you make DMX look like a responsible father. If you've been following my channel for a long time, you know why I hate the liberal media. Same reason why I despise fake alpha male douchebags who claim depression isn't real. I just don't like psychopaths. <laughs> I just don't like people who will do anything for money. Or for their addiction to ideology. So I really don't like the leftists typing hundreds of articles about what Tate's popularity proves about young men. And I really don't like the right-wingers making videos defending the kind of man they would never want to have around their own children, especially their own daughters, with some weak argument about big tech censorship. I'm allowed to call this man a shit stain, whether he's being cancelled or not, because he is. What else do you expect a taint to smell like? Now let me explain how the Taint manipulates his audience, while also explaining how Taint hacked social media algorithms in the PC era. We all know that YouTube began censoring conservatives since Trump became president. They've pretty much said it out loud. They are working together with the liberal media now. So in the age of cancel culture and shadow ban, I was surprised to suddenly see so many people talking about a very popular grifter with radical opinions. How is that even possible? Well, I found the answer in this article describing his conscious business strategy. Quote, when you join Hustlers University, you are told that the fastest way to make money is to promote Taint's website with your affiliate link. The most effective way to do this is to chop up bits of his videos online and post them as clips or shorts on social media. As we all know, shorts are pushed more than regular videos since it's a feature YouTube wants to reward its users for using. 
Another strategy is to create reviews of Hustlers University. The byproduct of all this is that Tate is now everywhere on social media. This content is being lapped up by the dating market square of opinions, by the manosphere, and by the how to make money online audiences. Then the algorithms on these platforms start pushing out all the associated content, and especially YouTube, due to the watch time that it's getting. End of quote. What that means is that at least 25,000 people, this is the number of university members he started out with, 25,000 people flooded social media platforms with footage of a taint. There hasn't been this much exposure of a taint since Jennifer Lawrence unleashed the fappening. By the time that this article covering his business strategy got published, Andrew's member count had grown from 25,000 to 127,000. Just imagine that many people uploading clips of you talking, and all of a sudden you can understand how the taint managed to smear his way into the depths of Google manipulation of algorithms. The taint basically used spam to create the illusion of relevance, organize his audience into posting about him and by doing that he eventually made himself relevant because Google is a really stupid search engine and AI sucks ass. AI couldn't tell a taint from its own a-hole. So even in the age of family-friendly algorithms the taint managed to make himself highly relevant just by spamming the internet through his audience and then getting people to react to his never-ending trolling. It's basically a repeat of Milo's rise to fame, only with more tech savvy. In the age of cancel culture and shadow ban, with YouTube becoming so family friendly it doesn't even allow comedy channels to flourish anymore, this man found a way to hack the system, proving that the taint is dangerously smart, which is a universe apart from being moral. Now, why do I use the term praying? to describe what Andrew does. Well, his entire presence on social media is based on reminding you of the things that the average social media addict doesn't have in their life. Cars, money, and beautiful women. He is flashing these things constantly, claiming it's the key to happiness, which any sane person knows is bullshit, but if you're really desperate, then you're hardly gonna be strong enough to remain sane. More specifically, he's targeting the many young men who are chronically lonely, work a job they hate, and struggling for money, thus making them more susceptible to the illusion that he's selling. Taint is doing exactly what social media generally does to people. It makes you believe that everyone else is doing better than you and that you're somehow missing out. People often go to social media to distract themselves from their problems and insecurities. And who do you find there? Mr. Taint, reminding us all that we're pathetic losers with no money. But here's a link to Hustlers University that can solve all your problems. And now I'm gonna show you some footage of Andrew Taint bragging about his very Christian lifestyle. Are you ready? Here's Andrew Taint reminding his viewers of what big losers they are. Are you ready? I live a very good life. I am a multi-millionaire. I'm a retired professional athlete. I have 16 supercars. I live in this big ass mansion. Do I have to point out that you live like a moron? 16 cars, so you need to buy 16 pieces of insurance and make sure that your 16 vehicles have gas. Is that really smart living? You're like a woman with handbags. One for every day of the week. You know, for someone who loves money, you really don't seem too interested in keeping it. But I guess that just checks off the checklist for a psychopath. Compare the clip of him bragging about his life to this clip here. I think that a lot of people now are doing things not because they enjoy them, because other people will think they're having fun and it's more about creating envy as opposed to actually enjoying yourself. Right. If you go on a really fun night out, you don't take your phone out. So when I see someone who went on a night out and took 20 stories dancing and laughing and, and having a great time, I know they're bored. Yeah, they're not in the moment. Do you know what I mean? Because if you really have a great night out, you don't take any stories and you, you forget to check your phone. So I think a lot of fun nowadays is misconstrued and I think it's people just trying to create envy. Let me ask you, Andrew. Is your favorite thing about social media the fact that nobody can see you cry? The more someone tries to convince you, the more it's evident that they're lying. 
that's his own logic, and it applies just as much to him as the people that he's talking about. I live a very good life. This is, in a nutshell, the law of the SJW. The harder someone is trying to convince you about their exterior, the more skeletons they will have in their closet. It's called being a poser, and it's hardly a new concept if you're familiar with metalheads and punk rockers. I think that a lot of people now are doing things not because they enjoy them, because other people will think they're having fun, and it's more about creating envy as opposed to actually enjoying yourself. Whoops, looks like someone is projecting. Right. If you go on a really fun night out, you don't take your phone out. Then how do you have all those cool pictures of the things you own and the awesome experiences you have? If you go on a really fun night out, you don't take your phone out. So when I see someone who went on a night out and took 20 stories dancing and laughing and, and having a great time, I know they're bored. Yeah, they're not in the moment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Because you do that every time you use social media. That's all you do. Flashing, flashing, flashing. You're working so hard with flashing, it's making us want to redefine what a flasher is. If Taint was genuine in his beliefs as a Christian, he would be telling you to study the Bible. If Taint was genuine in his beliefs as a Muslim, he'd be telling you to study the Quran and pray five times a day and don't even look at women. Instead, he's telling you how to get rich, how to get laid, and ultimately how to get as far away from traditionalism and living a religious lifestyle. So how dumb are the right-wing pundits to defend this basic bitch sex in the city character? Just because he's talking shit about women? Sorry, but traditionalism isn't just about hating feminism. It's also about why you specifically hate it, and hating materialism goes hand in hand with it. You don't find success, pride, nor joy as a man in shallow material possessions and meaningless sex. That's just the feminist city girl lifestyle in a nutshell. And I find it painfully ironic how there is an anti-feminist manosphere online that have enabled this douchebag, propelling him to fame. You people claim that you care about men. You also claim you're not misogynist. You're just traditional men. You don't hate women, and you just want to do something good for society. And then you do everything possible in your power to come off as creepy rape enablers who couldn't care less about the men you are preaching to. Because you're just selling shit. Or introducing them to people like Taint that will sell them Taint. The so-called Manosphere Online is surprisingly anti-male. Because often it comes down to the same bullshit advice about working too much, spending your life working so you can buy shit you don't need so that you can either attract the wrong kind of women or stay away from women altogether. Well, I don't see how any of those are viable options for a man looking to be happy. Last but not least, let's make this clear. I am not pro-cancel culture, complete opposite. How else would I be able to roast this moron if he isn't allowed to speak? No, 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 that's not what this is about. I've actually been cancelled myself earlier this year, so go ahead and donate on Subscribestar if you like this video. I also take Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. You can find many links in the video description to support my channel. And it's sponsor time. Cannabislight.se, the finest quality CBD products in Northern Europe. EU regulated non-psychoactive hemp oil, as well as buds and muscle recovery cream for the athletes. No THC, 100% legal, and you get 15% off on all products if you use the code ARIBLATTE. I personally endorse this company due to the high quality of their products. I know the people involved, they're very serious, very knowledgeable, and they know what they're doing. Make this your regular CBD provider, and you'll know what you're doing as well.